Yesterday was the Democratic primary election in a number of states, not as many as had been planned, because thankfully some governors were responsible and postponed the actual in-person voting and allowed for, you know, a month longer of absentee balloting, mail uh, voting, all of that. But it did proceed in some states. And look, I'm going to keep it real. Uh, as a supporter of Bernie Sanders, it did not go at all as I would have hoped in any of those states. So uh, starting with Arizona, Joe Biden was able to win 43.6% uh, of the vote to Bernie Sanders' 316 so a gap of about, uh, it's a 12 points, basically. Um, and I would not necessarily have predicted that a couple of weeks ago, especially with Bernie Sanders doing as amazingly well as he did in the Nevada caucuses. Um, Arizona didn't go great. Now, it was a, a smaller margin than in the other states. And in terms of the actual delegates that will be allocated from Arizona, Biden ends up getting 26 to Bernie Sanders is 22, at least as of what we have right now. So not a huge difference there, but that combined with the other states that were called earlier on yesterday, uh, Illinois and Florida, which we'll get to, um, it allows him to say that he swept all of the states, which is like we have to accept reality. We have to point that out in, uh, let's see, Florida. It was a it was a gigantic win for Joe Biden. He's at 62 percent to Bernie Sanders is 23, 8 percent going for Mike Bloomberg. I'm assuming early voting or just those, you know, diehard Bloomberg fans. Um, and look, in terms of the pledge delegates out of that, Biden in the end is going to end up getting like 90 or 100 more from it than uh, Bernie Sanders will, which is big. That was one of the biggest remaining states going into um, Tuesday. You know, I mean, it's, look, it's the size basically of Texas in terms of delegates. It's half the size of California, which Bernie did win. But with the fact that Biden was already leading, uh, Bernie needs as many delegates as possible. And so that Florida result was was not great. And finally, we have Illinois. Uh, Joe Biden at 59 to Bernie Sanders is 36 and a gap of probably about 35 delegates extra going uh, to Biden off of that. In the end, as of right now, it looks like Joe Biden's at 1153 in delegates to Bernie Sanders is 874. And you can see down there that Elizabeth Warren and Mike Bloomberg were able to get some delegates. Um, that would have been important if we had a contested convention, but it is not looking like that is what's going to happen um, at this point. So look, three states, three uh, disappointing outcomes um, nested inside of a disappointing choice to go forward with any of these elections. Look, we talked about this in our live coverage last night. None of this should have happened. None of it. I mean, the individual governors should have done should have done what's right. They should have been responsible and they should have postponed it. I mean, we're postponing literally everything else in this country. The idea that the one thing that you have to go forward in is the thing that gets the most people together and forces them to congregate possibly for hours at a time. Like I keep saying, if it's not safe to sit in a Denny's, it's not safe to stand in line to vote for multiple hours. And yet they pushed forward. And look, we, we speculated a lot about why exactly that is. Um, you know, I, I have my theories. I'm sure you do as well. Uh, I don't think that the reason they pushed forward with it is just, you know, a steadfast love of democracy and a need for things to continue. I just, I don't think that that's why it is. I think it was convenient electorally. I think that some people care more about trying to uh, finish this primary, to wind it down as fast as possible. I think that that was very important to some people, more important than making sure um, that people are safe and that they don't expose themselves potentially to the coronavirus at the exact time that all of these same officials are saying, we got to flatten that curve, we got to be responsible, we got to accept that some things are going to change to make sure that as few people die as possible. And they went forward with it. So uh, let's talk about the consequences of that. Uh, one election judge in Illinois told the Chicago Sun-Times that turnout was lower than she's seen in two decades, with about a third of Illinois voters claiming they were, quote, very concerned that they or a family member would contract the virus, according to an AP survey. That is only the most reasonable thing I've heard in my entire life, basically. Uh, yeah, I would be very concerned to congregate in that sort of... I mean, look, people are worried about people passing them on the street. They're worried about going to a supermarket and passing by a few people. Imagine standing in a crowd. Yeah, I would be worried too. The New York Times reported that overall turnout was less than half what it was in the 2016 primary. And even that, by the way, like, look, I, some of those people, they, they just care so much that they want to vote. And on some level, you know, I respect that. I admire that. 
Um, but I don't want people to put themselves at risk. And I don't want them to be put into a position where they have to. And so we can we can be frustrated with any individual choice that, that potentially exposes them or other people to the disease, certainly. But the authorities are the ones that are supposed to be responsible. They're supposed to set the example that we follow. And in this case, they set an example, but not one that I think we should follow. Uh, turnout also declined in some Florida counties where polling locations were changed at the last minute. Uh, but NBC News estimated turnout at 2 million in the state overall, up from 1.7 million in 2016. So Florida actually increased, but that might be because almost half of uh, Florida voters, nearly 1.1 million, participated in early voting or mail-in voting. That's 20% higher than 2016. So their overall turnout is higher, but not the day of in-person turnout. Um, but still, especially Florida, like what, what is the average age in Florida? What's the average age of likely voters in Florida? And still, at the very least, hundreds of thousands of them, many hundreds of thousands, queued up and stood in line. And uh, will we ever know any individual or any number of people um, who were exposed to coronavirus because of those lines in, in those states? Not necessarily. Um, there will always be some plausible deniability. It's difficult to know exactly when people got infected. But with those numbers, you can guarantee that it happened. And considering the older population, both for the voters and for the people working at polls, you can also guarantee that someone is going to die as a result of this choice. Uh, that will be a consequence. Will, be, will there be any consequences for those who pushed forward with the elections? Probably not. These sorts of powerful people never suffer any consequences for what they do. But when you see someone like Tom Perez on the news saying, you know, you know, I'm not going to step in. Uh, it's not our place. It's the states. We're not going to interfere. And then like the day, a day or two after saying all states should go forward. I mean, we know we know where they stand on this. Now, look, uh, should we accept these results? Uh, I think for any individual, I mean, I guess that's on you. I find them to be at best questionable and unrepresentative. Um, not universally bad. I mean, we talked earlier about Marie Newman. She she managed to win. I guess that's a good result. Um, but what would the turnout have been like had everyone been free to vote in a way that was, you know, safe and accessible? Um, I don't know. I, I don't know that any of these states necessarily would have flipped. I mean, the closest was Arizona and it was still about 14 points. I don't know that that would have been different. Um, but that's literally like compared to the potential human cost, we shouldn't be having to do those hypotheticals. We really shouldn't. Now, for Bernie Sanders, uh, last night didn't go great. Let's keep it real. And uh, we don't know for sure exactly what's going to happen. I can say that uh, even as the results were coming in last night, like you had Claire McCaskill, former Democratic senator. She was on the news saying this thing is done. Bernie Sanders is going to drop out. And if you spent any time on social media uh, in the last day, you've probably seen any number of tweets like that, both from random Biden supporters who are saying, you know, it's long past time for him to drop out. Surrogates for the Biden campaign are saying, how dare he stay in? So that is definitely going around. Now, at the end of the day, it's it's on Bernie Sanders. Um, I'm sure that he's assessing the math and the polls going forward. Um, the actual look, the, the delegate gap between them is a couple of hundred. Now, that that doesn't seem huge, but we do have to bear in mind that that means that in every future contest, the farther you are behind, the, the bigger the gap needs to be in your favor for the remaining contests. I think I've seen estimates that he would have to win about 60 or slightly more than 60% of all delegates going forward. Now, that is not impossible, certainly not impossible, but it is difficult, especially when the po like the gap so far in the last week or two has been generally pretty negative towards Bernie. And so I'm sure he's going to be looking at that. Um, he's going to be looking at the polls of the states coming forward. And remember, um, thankfully, some other states that weren't voting on Tuesday, they did delay uh, their elections. And so staying in means staying in for some time because we're not going to have a lot of these elections for the next at least a month, possibly longer. You could have more cancellations soon. And so all of this is going to be factored in to what Bernie Sanders and his team are probably literally uh, having a conversation about right now. Uh, thank you, Gabby. I saw that. Uh, now let's talk about one thing that has been going around on Twitter uh, as we were doing our prep to go forward with this stream. Uh, uh, 
there was a Sanders campaign email. I'm going to read you just a few excerpts from it. Um, I got it. You guys probably got it as well. Uh, They said, no sugarcoating it. Last night did not go the way we wanted. And while our campaign has won the battle of ideas, we are losing the battle over electability to Joe Biden. Bernie and Jane are going to get on a plane back to Vermont. Once there, they'll begin holding conversations with supporters to get input and assess the path forward for our campaign. We will keep you updated as those conversations progress. In the meantime, please continue to stay safe, and thank you for everything you've done so far. It means the world to Bernie and Jane. So, look, uh, just from the the text of that, that that is not worth staying in no matter what, which is, by the way, early yesterday, the message that was coming out from the Bernie campaign, saying that this is, you know, regardless of what happens today, this is not going to be the end of the campaign. Um, I think that they're probably less in that direction right now. Now, they're right before we went live, Axios, like some people were saying that Axios was reporting that he had dropped out. That was at least as of the time that we're filming this, that was not true. It was that like he had dropped his Facebook advertising or something like that, which is not the same thing. Now, it could be related. Generally, if you're going to cancel your campaign, you're probably going to cancel the advertising too. And a lot of people noticed that in that email I just read for you, it did not end with a donate button, which is generally what they do. I think it led to basically an overview of Bernie Sanders' um, response on coronavirus, what should be done there. And so, look, both of those are hints that hypothetically this might not go forward. And so we have to prepare ourselves for that. Um, I mean, look, Bernie Sanders, obviously, even, even if he doesn't think that he can become the nominee, he wants to make sure that, like in 2016, he pushes the party and the eventual nominee in the right direction. And uh, while Biden and his team might not like that, staying in does probably provide uh, more, you know, a better position to do that from. You know, more delegates, more people who voted for him. And look, we already know what percentage of the population supports Bernie Sanders. In, a pro- in, in nation- nationwide polls, it's 50-50 with Joe Biden, which is why these results, I think, feel so absurd. Um, but I don't know for sure. Look, I, w- I would guess... I would guess that there's probably a pretty good chance that they suspend the campaign. And in particular, one thing that I brought up on our coverage last night that that bothers me so fundamentally is uh, the pr- some pressure is being put on him to do this because of the fact that we're in a pandemic. Um, because, ne- like, in the same way that they said a couple days ago, we have to go forward with the voting, we can't let this shut things down because they thought that it would be good for Joe Biden, you can expect that all of those voices are going to be saying, we want to shut this thing down, but the only way we can do that is if Bernie Sanders drops out. And the thing is, honestly, Bernie Sanders is such a good person that that sort of pressure is probably going to be somewhat effective on him. He's not going to want his supporters to expose themselves. And so, look, I'm not saying that will be the deciding factor, but I do think that's one thing that they might consider as we go forward. <sighs> Incredibly frustrating. Look, I, I I see some comments about Joe Biden's VP. Uh, look, if Bernie suspends his candidacy, we will certainly get to that. Maybe I'll have an Emma on. We'll do a top 10 list or something like that. Um, personally, I'm not I'm not ready to go there just yet. I need like another day or something. I don't know. Um, but we'll look, we're, we're going to be looking to, um, I, I believe they're going to be announcing something later on today. So we will certainly be following that. Perhaps in a later video um, on today, we can talk about that. But as of right now, that that's what's going on with Bernie Sanders. They're, I'm sure, having a tough conversation in the middle of an incredibly difficult situation. Um, you know, I don't envy them the position that they've been put in. Um, but I do expect that Bernie Sanders will do what he thinks is best for the movement going forward. <laughs> 